Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today sees the launch of the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. Now, I just wanna put a little bit of honesty out there. I'm actually filming this on the day that this is launching. So if this video isn't up to our normal standards, apologies, but let's try and muddle for it anyway and take a look. So the first thing I wanna talk about with this card is, I guess, pricing. Get that out of the way nice and early. So this is actually got, well, it's got an MSRP of $259.99 in the UK, $279.99 US dollars, and then $259.99 euros. So when you actually look at that compared to sort of say the 2060, 2060, you can actually currently get for 299. This exact one, actually, the Palette Storm X, but in the 2060 variety, yeah, 299.99. So that's gonna be, I guess, one of the big points of this video is looking at the performance of this card compared to a 2060 and seeing if that extra 30 pounds is worth it. It's also worth bearing in mind that AMD have just dropped prices on their cards as well. So Vega 56, uh, RX 590 and so forth. So very kind of tight competition. Now, I'm not really gonna go through the box too much because it doesn't really give us much information, kind of, you know, typical branding that you'd see from partner cards. So the one that we've got here is made by Palette. So if I move everything to the side, uh, just to kind of go through what you get inside, simple stuff again, instruction manual and a driver CD. Nothing really, you know, out of the ordinary. Now, the card itself, I will obviously go through, you know, uh, what Palette have done with this card compared to, you know, just an NVIDIA reference model but I guess most of it's gonna come down to specifications. So this is actually based on the Turing uh, GPU and the Turing architecture, like we've seen on the RTX series, but there's no tensor cores and there's no RT cores. So we're not gonna be seeing any wonderful ray tracing technology or any DLSS. Now let's talk a little bit about kind of, you know, key major specs of this. So even though uh, the RTX 2060, for instance, which this is very, very similarly kind of matched to, that uses the TU-106 core. This is actually slightly different. It's the TU-116 core, just to kind of differentiate between, I guess, a GTX model and an RTX model. Now, obviously, when we look at this card and sort of, you know, what it's going to be replacing, I guess initially we're going to be looking at the GTX 1060. Now, there are a few kind of fundamental differences, as you'd expect, moving up a generation, mainly when it comes to kind of, you know, core clock speeds, uh, CUDA cores, shaders, that kind of thing. So when it actually comes to the CUDA cores on this, we have a whopping 1,536 CUDA cores compared to just 1,280 on a GTX 1060. So for anyone who's doing rendering, that's going to be, you know, perfect for you and that also gives us an indication that there is going to be you know quite a nice little performance leap as well there is also quite a big jump when it comes to the cash on this particular card as well so we're actually going up to 1536 compared to just 480 again on the 1060 now another key difference is going to be the base clock so the base clock on this card obviously if it's not an overclocked model is going to be uh, 1500 megahertz now compared to the 1060 that was actually at 1506 so it has gone down slightly but the boost clock has gone up slightly so the boost clock is higher at 1770 compared to just uh, 1708 again on the 1060. Other key specifications, I guess, comes down to the bus. So we've got a 192-bit bus. We have 96 texture units, all these kind of numbers. And I don't really want to go through every single one, teraflops and things like that, because you could just go directly to the NVIDIA website and find out the key specifications. So I really kind of want to talk about, you know, some of the other things. Now, one of the key things I do want to talk about on this card is power delivery. So when we actually look at it being a PCI Express-based card, that means we're getting 75 watts of power just from the actual bus itself. Now it has got a single eight pin power connector on there, which is giving us another 150 watts of power. So in total, we've got 225 watts of power, but this card actually only has a TDP of 120 watts. I can kind of see why they've gone that way instead of just having a single six pin connector, because that would only technically give us 30 watts of kind of, you know, headroom, especially when you're looking at overclocking. Now, I think before we actually sort of, you know, analyze, I guess, this particular card from Palette, let's show you some performance numbers, but I guess really I want to talk about overclocking. Now when overclocking this card, obviously we didn't have a lot of time with it due to the fact that we're filming on the day that it launched, but we were able to kind of, you know, do some rough overclocks on it and run some benchmarks just to make sure that the overclock was all good. So we actually took this from the base clock of 1500 megahertz all the way up to 1720. 
But not just stopping there, we did obviously look at memory as well. So we actually took the memory again from 1500 megahertz all the way up to 1900 megahertz, which is absolutely outstanding. Uh, when it comes to kind of the boost clock, when you're comparing, you know, putting the base clock up, we, we're actually kind of seeing it peaking around sort of 2070 megahertz, which is absolutely astronomical. The fact that we've managed to get the boost clock above two gigahertz, that's absolutely crazy. So yes, we did do that, but let's take a look at them glorious benchmarks and see exactly how it performed both at stock and in one of our overclock tests. So the card itself, obviously I want to talk through kind of, you know, the, the different designs that you can get because there are going to be cards out there from Asus, there's going to be cards out there from MSI, EVGA. And the problem I, I guess that most people are going to have is the MSRP. So Nvidia are trying to be really aggressive on the pricing with this, pricing it at $259.99 in the UK, $279 in the US and then $259 uh, in Euros as well for Europe. The problem is, while Palette may be able to kind of hit that MSRP with a card like this, featuring this small kind of form factor design, I don't think people like Azus with their Strix cards are really gonna you know, be able to do that because you're having to pay extra for the extra materials because all of the Strix coolers are exactly the same. They're just bolted on different cards. So that then means that you're paying, for instance, a Strix cooler is gonna kind of come out to here. So you're paying for that extra bit of material where you don't actually need it. As you could see in kind of our benchmark and overclock tests, um, a card of this size really actually did surprise us. It was kind of on par, I guess, and you know, nipping at the heels of a 1070 Ti. It was actually beating a 1070 in certain tests. And Nvidia were claiming that this was only gonna sort of, you know, beat the 1060. It was gonna be better performance than that. But in our tests, it kind of blew it out of the water in, in certain sort of, you know, different benchmarks. So really kind of, you know, happy with that. And I guess it's one of them things, first impressions, you know, aren't always right, I guess. You sort of look at a card like this and you think, okay, it's a bit plastic, it's a bit small, but just look at the performance results that we were getting. But there are some kind of, you know, caveats with that. It's 259.99, but we're told by Palette that they might not be able to hit their MSRP and they're actually gonna be looking at sort of 269. So that bridges that gap a little bit closer to 2060. So do you buy this card or do you go out and buy a 2060? It's a very, very difficult one to do. I guess if you want ray tracing and DLSS, which is all that kind of, you know, nice, wonderful stuff, then yes, 2060 might be the way forward. But Nvidia are touting this card at 1080p, 120 hertz gamers. So anyone who's playing CSGO, anyone who's playing Fortnite, competitive esports, this I think is gonna be the card for you. 2060, yes, it's gonna be nice, but I think if you're in kind of the competitive esports realm, you're not gonna care about ray tracing. You're not gonna care about DLSS because the types of games that you're playing don't have that functionality anyway. Instead, you want high frame rates that's gonna match your monitor and give you the most 
I guess, the gameplay that's going to help you the most in what you're actually trying to achieve. So when I talked about kind of, you know, this design of card from palette, obviously there's two different aspects of this video, the Nvidia side and then the palette side. So Nvidia have done an amazing job with the GPU core and just the architecture and what they've actually managed to implement into this little powerhouse. It's a double slot card and it's just very, very compact, which means I think this is going to appeal to a much broader spectrum uh, sort of market of people out there because you don't have to go for a very big chassis like a H700i or, uh, you know, a Corsair Obsidian 1000D. I mean, you know, I'm going crazy there, but you could put this into a mini ITX small form factor system and get really good frame rates, you know, even at higher resolutions, 4K, 1440. But if you are sort of wanting to go down a 1080p route, you know, you can do this pretty cheaply, 259.99 throw in a chassis, throw in a, you know, a, a decent CPU, some memory. I think you could honestly build a, I don't know, a system for maybe five, 600 pounds that's going to be able to play the latest games at reasonable frame rates. Yes, you may have to dial down some of the settings, but look at exactly what you get. In terms of cooling performance, we was really actually impressed with that as well. It has a triple uh, kind of heat pipe design and a huge chunky heat sink that takes over the whole card. As I mentioned earlier, it does have an 8-pin power connector on there, which I guess some would deem as unnecessary. You could get away with a 6-pin, but I can see why they did it. And you can see from our overclock results, especially on the memory, we were able to push that so far. And I don't think if this had a 6-pin a power connector, we'd be able to get anywhere near that. In terms of connections on the back, we've got you know a pretty simple setup. We've got a single display port, a single HDMI, and a single dual link DVI. This card, I guess, especially, you know, this one from Palette is kind of your no frills option. It's absolutely fantastic at what you get in terms of the performance, uh, the cooler and the price point. And I guess that's the general takeaway from this is, yes, you could buy the 2060 for £30 more, but do you really need the features that that's giving you? If you don't, then I think this is actually the card to go for. If you do, get the 2060. Nvidia aren't going to complain if you go and buy the 2060 instead of the 1660 Ti. But it's also worth noting that, as rumours would suggest, obviously we can't confirm or deny anything, this is a 1660 Ti, very soon we will see the 1660 as well. So we have that to kind of contend with, and I guess as long as that comes in at the right price point, then yeah, there's going to be fierce competition. I'm not really mentioning AMD too much in this because, well, we haven't had any cards from them recently, so we can't really compare too much with it, and well... Just look at the market share. Nvidia are absolutely killing it at the moment. So there you go. So my final thoughts on this really is if you wanna go for the 1660 Ti, you're gonna be able to get a fairly high spec one, uh, at least when the overclock models kind of, you know, hit the markets and stuff like that, or you could go for the lower end of the scale with a 2060. Let me know in the comments section below which one you'd go for. High end 1660 Ti and sort of get them high frame rates and, you know, still get the Turing architecture or do you want the kind of more glamorous RTX 2060 but you're going to end up with a lower end model. I'm really interested to kind of see what you guys think. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, hopefully I didn't waffle on too long. Like I say this was a bit of a difficult one because we only got this card today and we are launching it in sort of the next couple of hours but there you go. You know exactly what to do and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys, bye bye.